Hey Root Stones and Bones folks, it's Hillary and I am here in the cabin um, ready to do June Sit and Sew with you guys. So I'm going to get right to it and then afterwards if you guys want like a little cabin tour I can show you, you know, spin the camera around, that kind of thing. Um, but I know that there's been some issues with the camera when I flip it so I'm going to try to just do this with you guys. So tonight our project, hi Elisa, our project are unsponges. Look at that lovely bunch of summery, okay, of summery sponges, okay. I use a rag. I don't know what you guys use at home. If you use sponges, um, they're not really environmentally friendly, my goodness. I say that five times fast. Um, but these can be upcycled. Um, with, you know, an old towel. Um, I bought a new towel to cut up for this and I did um, purchase some terry cloth by the yard um, that is red, which is really lovely too. Um, and you'll need uh, any type of cotton, um, like a fat quarter. You'll need two pieces, your outer, your back of the terry towel the front your print pattern and those are going to be four inches by five inches. I decided to put a mesh, you can see the um, white mesh over the top. When I did, oop, there it goes, when I did some experimenting, um, I tried using tool like in my early stages of like coming up with this month's sit and sew for you guys, this tutorial. Um, I tried using tool and it was very scratchy um, and it didn't, it, it ended up ripping. So I needed something a little more sturdy. So I went and I got this, uh, I think it's three millimeter mesh and I'm kind of using the, I like the back flat side and I've been using, um, this exact sponge in my kitchen now. Um, and we're going to make Elisa one of these cause she wanted one of these. Hey Andrew, how are you doing? Where are you, man? I'm sewing in my cabin tonight. So this is uh, the sit and sew. We're gonna make some unsponges, and I really like the word for them. And like I said, really great for upcycling if you have old towels, um, old cotton prints that you're like, you know, that are ready to go. Okay, and I'm using a mesh outer. Uh, so that is four inches by five inches for the. I'll show you guys a piece. I have them all ready to go okay so you're gonna take your inner here's your outer four inches by five inches okay and you have your piece of mesh now I was cutting it the exact same length but the problem being you're gonna leave a little hole to turn and flip and this is hard to tuck under when it's short so I started making this six inches by four inches so it's or even you could do six by five so the mesh kind of overlaps on the outside and you can make sure that it's nice and snug and if it shifts around at all that it's definitely going to get hit and also that you can tuck it under okay so your outer your back your cover for scrubbing and four inches of a piece of, I'm using a piece of jute you can use ribbon another kind of twine, um, you know, any kind of thing you like because I like having the ability to hang it. I have a space above my sink where I hang everything. So what do you guys use? You use sponges, Elisa? I don't even, how do I not know this? I've known you for almost 30 years. I'm like, what, what's this girl all about? Sponges or rags? Probably rags, but we're going to step it up. Okay, here we go, guys. So... Let's do Elisa's because she is requesting this beautiful sunflower fabric. Yes, you do. Ha. Well, we're going to get her off the sponges just like people need to get my tarot card cases and get out of the box and into a nice case. So I like how these are reusable. You can throw them in the washing machine um, so they're nice and clean. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to lay your mesh on top of your outer fabric. 
you are going to turn your loop and make sure it's facing down to the inside of your project in the corner. I'm putting mine in the right corner, put yours in the center, put it on the left corner. You know, what's great about this project is you can really go all out and make it your own. Okay, so and I'm using a piece of towel and I am going to put that on top. And my right side is going to be facing the right side of the quilter's fabric. And I have pins, but I find that the clips work a little bit better um, to not allow shifting so much, okay? So I just pinned that in the corner. I'm gonna kind of go around my project and clip it in a few places that I know did I bring more clips? So I'm going to use some pins, which is fine. But it does often cause a kind of pucker, and that's how I end up bending a lot of um, needles, is by doing this exact thing on fabric that is rather too thick for it. Okay. Hey, Chris, how you doing? What's up, my cousin? All right, so I have got the quilter's cotton right side up with the mesh on top, your loop in the corner, and you are sandwiching all of that in with your terry towel so everything is right side facing right side, okay? You wanna make sure that the loop is on top of the mesh, okay? Because when you reach in, it's, it's a little bit weird. You have to make sure you, um, when you're turning it, pull the right thing. So I like to reach in and pull the loop, so. Hey cousin, hey, I'm in the cabin, this is great. I'm having a great time. Oh, hey Kate, how are you? Yeah, I, I uh, was talking with my, my drummer tonight and um, since this cabin is like super open, all the windows are open, it's totally screened in, it's like being outside and I'd really like to get this she shed sewing shack and whip it up into a jam space as well, so. I really miss playing some music and I hope I can get to that soon and show you guys that side of myself. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do now, we pinned it all together. You're gonna go, this is an example I haven't top stitched yet, okay? So you're gonna start at the bottom. You're gonna leave like this much open, okay? So like inch and a half. You can measure this, you can mark it, you can, um, be intuitive like me if you're a little bit more intermediate at sewing. But if you're a beginner, this is a great project because it does, it teaches you corners. Um, it teaches you how to make a project start to finish really fast and it's super fun, okay? So you're leaving like a half, more than a half inch. Every time I do it, that's all I'm leaving open and it's way too little. So I would say a good inch and a half. You wanna make sure to stitch around the corners because you want really nice corners to turn out so it looks professional, right? So you're gonna start here, you're gonna sew up, around, over the corner. When I get to the corner with the hoop, it is rather thin and small, so I backstitch and forward stitch a few times, make sure that it's going to be sturdy, because um, I'm also gonna be pulling on this to turn it right side out, okay? So you're gonna go around, back down, last corner, leaving that open, okay? Then we're gonna turn it, this is the fun part. Stephanie, hey Stephanie, how are you doing? How's Trapper doing? He, he got laid up, I've, I've been meaning to send a message and send him some love, so send him some love for, for me through you to him, and I'm sure you need it too, and if anyone's had a sick man at home before, you know that that's an issue. Okay, where did that, pe oh, it's already in my machine, ready to go. Let's do it. We're going to stitch around. We're making Elisa's unsponge. So tell me guys, like, what's your thing? I want to know what you're using at home. Sponges? Are you using washcloths to do your dishes? Do you guys say, what the hell is washing dishes? I'm going to throw that thing in the dishwasher. So like, some people are probably beyond sponges right now. If you're one of those people, you know, let me know. I'd love to know your secret how do you get away from it you can't throw everything in the dishwasher though I have tried and it's melted okay don't do it so it does shift around a little bit if you're not paying attention 
That's why I like the overlapping of the mesh a little bit. Okay, so I'm coming to the corner um, where I will have my loop. So I'm removing my piece and I'm just gonna hold it with my finger. So here I am and I'm gonna back stitch a couple times. sure my needle is down all right so we're rounding the corner home and we'll turn it right side out so the other thing I should mention is I'm using a bit larger of a seam allowance at the bottom and that's because the hole is there to turn I want enough to really fold under because like I said the mesh is kind of a pain to fold under um, and then you have those three layers there so if you leave a little bigger of a seam allowance and certainly don't trim that because you want to when you flip it have a nice top stitch that'll really help a lot okay like learners lessons here I do a lot of stupid stuff I mess a lot of stuff up so if you guys have any shortcuts, let me know. All right, I'm coming around the last corner, and like I said, the seam allowance is a little bit bigger, and I'm going to go forward. I'm gonna leave myself more room this time. Okay, where are my scissors, guys? Woo! They done grew legs. Okay, nope, they're behind the machine. Behind the machine. Hey, Danny, what's up? Is Liz with you? How you guys doing? I have scape tapenade for you guys to come and get, and you should. Okay, so I'm gonna check my work, make sure I've got all my corners good. Looks like that corner is a little wonky. Where am I? Okay, take that. Okay, you can always go over your work again. So this side is not gonna be shown. So any uglies is okay, all right? So you can see I stitched around one, two, three, four corners and I left the bottom open. Now you wanna trim your corners. So you have nice corners when you turn. I try to be a little more generous on the corner with the loop. Um, my sewing partner in crime has arrived. Um, okay. So here you have it, okay? I'm gonna reach in, and now you wanna make sure you reach in over the mesh. And I left a little more room this time, which is really great. So I'm gonna reach over the mesh, and I'm gonna look for that loop. And I'm gonna pray I put it on the right side. Heather, hey Heather, how are you doing? Uh, it's a beautiful night. I'm in the cabin. I'm all screened in. Okay, okay, okay. And we're giving birth right now to an unsponge. <laughs> See, I found the loop. It looks pretty funky right now. But I'm going to pull it. And then I'm going to get my favorite tool in the whole world. And you guys are going to laugh. Or maybe you're not going to laugh because you're going to know how valuable it is. If I can ever... I can't ever find anything I need. I took it out. I had it right next to me. Okay. Well, my favorite tool is a chopstick, and it probably rolled away on the floor. Aha! I see it. You're locked out, my dear. Hold on a, hold on a sec. Um, I just, the lock's on the inside of the cabin for the screen door, and I don't want to get eaten by bugs in here. Okay. Best tool ever. Do you guys like Chinese food? Do you like to use chopsticks? Keep them. Poke your corners. Be smart. Eat Chinese food. Save the, save the tools. These are my favorite. Okay. So there you go. This loop got a little smaller than I would have liked. But that's probably because I just was messing with it. All right, so we've turned it out right. See, and, and I've got my opening here, okay? And I would have liked to have a little bit more to fold under, honestly, okay? So that's why I'm saying, like, have an inch below with the mesh. It really helps, okay? And from here, 
I just get a little bit of polyfill and I don't overstuff it because you kind of have to move the stuffing as you <laughs> fluff um, as you are sewing around the edges um, for top stitching but this works really well and it feels makes it feel like a sponge and it makes it soap up really nice and I like that both of us are there what's up you guys come get some scape top knot and like stink with me huh I miss you guys so we've even been kind of extreme social distancing with family both um, uh, my sister-in-law who's watching you know they they work with a lot of people all day and my mother-in-law works at a hospital so we're all kind of um, you know taking turns with visits and always wearing masks um, and I I usually don't because my children and you know, my, my daughter can't and so you know there's kind of no point there if she can't be protected I might as well be with her but anyway you should know that our masks right now all have free shipping so the virus is on the rise and it's not a resurgence it's still the first wave I want you guys to be protected and be able to get those masks a little easier okay so I've shifted this about and then I realized meh needs more stuffing what's everyone doing tonight hey Melanie what are you up to we are making unsponges I am on the last part of our journey with this and I can show some off. I know I've got a lot more viewers now, so I might as well show a few off that I've finished with the top stitch. That's what it looks like with the top stitch finished. Um, they're really fun. This is a really fun summer print. And they've all got a nice terry towel on the back. So I wanted to make these for myself, and I couldn't stop. Okay, so I've got like got a ton cut out and um, so I think I'm gonna offer them on the shop maybe like two of them for like five bucks or something you know really really inexpensive and they're gonna last you guys a while through washes and um, lots of use everything I make I plan on it lasting um, it's the problem with not being upstairs in my studio I feel like I can't find anything I'm like out of sorts guys all right so the little clip is where the hole is okay it's nice and stuffy and puffy you can leave it like this but I'm I'm not a ladder stitch kind of person even though I know how to do that um, I'm gonna just top stitch and I'm using I think quarter inch you can go a little you can go crazy you can put extra stitching in the middle make it look really cool and puffy whatever you want to do okay and I often need a little help on the edges with the feed dog seem to not pick this up so I'm just using like my little pick and pushing what's up okay I'm already doing that all right so I back stitched and now I'm gonna go around my whole project minding what I'm doing I've gotten to this corner so now I'm gonna take the fuzzy stuff on the inside our fluff and I'm gonna push it over so I have a nice flat space to top stitch all right here we go guys Elisa we're like three quarters of the way done with your unsponge girl So I must say that this is mom's machine and the beautiful uh, fabric with the sunflowers is also mom's. So it's really nice that we can keep her traditions going even though she's no longer with us. And it feels really good to share that with you guys too. So I know we're all missing somebody right now, um, whether we've lost them um, to the virus or, or, or not, or we just can't see them. So it's really nice that I can kind of Keep, keep her spirit alive. Now we can think of her every time we do dishes. <laughs> the dishes we don't want to do. I remember getting yelled at a lot as kids 
for Elisa's state of her room. Isn't that right, Elisa? <laughs> Elisa Ann. Can't wait to use it. Yeah. It's filled with lots of love. So I am a crazy person, and even though I back stitch, I really like to pick my stitches back out and tie a knot. But it looks like on this I did a good enough job so I can just trim it. And I like to do the finish work as I go along so that make sure you don't catch your thread tails underneath and jam all of your stuff up. Rounding home. Homeward bound. Okay. Come on now. Ba -ba -da -ba. Unsponge. There you go. And now all you gotta do, well, I'm gonna fix my little tails here, uh, get some dirty dishes, right? Or whatever it is you might need a really nice reusable sponge for. I've, um, I've thought about making, I know they're, this zero waste stuff is really hot right now. Um, so I thought about making um, makeup remover pads and things like that. I don't know if there's any interest for that kind of a product. Um, if you are interested, let me know, and maybe that could be our next sit and sew. I'm really glad you guys tuned in. Um, if you haven't joined our crafters group yet, Crafters of the Curious and Divine, um, you can find that group through our main page, um, and certainly join. I'm going to put up a little picture tutorial of how to make this so you can get your pieces and follow along. Um, and in the future, I'd like to get that stuff up earlier for you guys. Um, but please join our crafters group. We'd love to see what you guys are doing, what you're making. Um, hey, Jessis, what's up, girl? I miss you guys. How's Seattle doing? Is it like blowing up on fire like they say in the news? Or is, you know, I hear a lot of conflicting stuff about that. Hmm. But my folks out there will tell me the truth, right? No lies. Anyway. Get your, get your sewing machine out and make some unsponges. These would be great gifts. Um, they're really fun little summer things. And um, if you liked this, share us out, follow us. Um, invite some friends who enjoy this kind of thing. We do lots of gardening. We do wild crafting. Um, the, uh, you name it and I can probably figure it out and show, show you some form of how to do it. So. Um, I love you guys, and this is for my business partner, but I have lots and lots to go, so check back in our shop, and hopefully I'll have these available if there's some interest, and I hope you guys have a great night. Bye.